Hello, 2019. I haven't sat down at the computer or the camera or the YouTube or whatever in quite some time to do these one-on-one -on -one talks, but whenever I do, it's about something I'm really passionate about and something that I really want to share because I think it can help someone. So uh, thank you guys so much for being a part of the journey. It's really been beautiful to see these YouTube subscribers growing. Um, very different for me, obviously, because my focus has always been music and my audience has always been via music, but it's so nice to know that there are people interested in this content that I'm creating, which is always about music, motherhood, and wellness, and creating that community that I think is so necessary for getting through life. I think if we had the opportunity and the platform to do something positive, we should be. And so that's what this channel is about, and that's why I'm here again today. Uh, I recently learned that April is C-Section Awareness Month. Now for all the moms and for all the women who have been following me on this motherhood journey, and in 2016 when I shared the first video that pretty much changed everything and became the catalyst as to why I continue to do this, it was when I shared my birth story. And I'm not gonna rehash that story. If you haven't seen it, please go check it out. But I am here to share a little bit more of this specific journey as a C-section mama and what that looks like. And in this last three years, I have met so many women who have undergone cesarean sections and it has really allowed me to learn a little bit more and to understand the process and what's happening. And let's just start with the statistics. One in every three women will deliver a baby in the United States via cesarean section operation, which is alarmingly high. Now, there's many factors that play into this that I think are all warranted to have a discussion about, which is, is it pre-existing health issues? What are happening with women as to why women are having to have planned C-sections? Is it elected? Is it the personal, psychological, cosmetic, physical thing about I can plan, I can control and elect when I want to have my child? Is it financial? Is it a narrative and a procedure that is now being pushed on women as a matter of convenience, but feeds into the financial gain of the medical industry? Let's be clear, an operation costs more than a natural birth. You require more drugs, more medical intervention, a longer stay in the hospital. And these are all the conversations and the debates that have been happening around C-sections for years. So knowing all of this, going into having a baby, I was absolutely team no C-section. Don't even bring that conversation around me. I'm a warrior woman. I come from a long lineage of warrior women who had babies at home with no problems and it's not going to be any different for me and I'm going to be the warrior woman that is going to have a baby and it's going to be fine. If you watch the first video, you'll know that that is not the way my birth story went at all. Completely, completely unexpected. So I'll say this, the thing that made me change my mind from wanting to have a home birth to having my son in the hospital was the conversation I had with my doctor. And my doctor so plainly said, and let me say this, I had a very good relationship with my doctor. I trusted him by far more experienced than any of the other OBGYNs that I have interviewed and seen. I really believed that he would advise me in the right way. And the one thing that he said was, in an emergency, minutes can mean the difference between life or death. And when he said that, I was like, all right, I'll have the baby at the hospital. But no, I'm going to have it as natural as possible. No epidural. I'm going to have my doula there. I need my crystals. I need incense. I need sage. I need my acupuncturist. And I just need all the people that are on payroll here in the hospital to be standing outside the door just in case something happens. And that's pretty much how it went until I developed an unforeseen medical complication during my labor. And I developed something called preeclampsia, which is rare for labor, very common for pregnancy, but there was no indication that this would have happened to me during labor. And that just means my blood pressure was going up and up and up and up and up. And I was at risk of having a stroke. And so I was faced with the decision to have to surrender and allow the medical professionals to come in and bring my son into the world via C-section. I did not want it. I was terrified. I cried. I resisted for nine hours until it became a matter of life or death. And at that point, I chose life. At that point, I chose my life and wanting to see my son and being there for his life. And let me say that once the surgery was over, I was just so happy that he was there and we had made it and I was feeling okay. 
And then the reality of what a C-section is actually kicked in. And these are the conversations and the information that I don't think enough mothers are given when going into an unexpected and unforeseen C-section, an emergency C-section, if you will. It is major abdominal surgery. As casual as everyone wants to treat it and as commonplace as it is nowadays, it is major abdominal surgery. There is a number of layers of skin, muscle, tissue, organs that have to go through to your abdomen to bring this baby out into the world, which requires some real gentle recovery. Let's talk about the physical aspects. I couldn't walk for 24 hours. I was hooked up to a catheter, was unable to use the restroom, had someone coming to dress my wounds. I had to wear uh, compression boots and socks in order to help reduce the swelling. Um, not to mention I had a scar. I couldn't get up to pick up my child. I, I couldn't walk. I, it, was, it was rough. Also something that wasn't told to me was I was struggling to breastfeed in the beginning and I didn't know why and everyone was like, oh, just keep at it, it'll be fine. But nobody told me because I had a C-section that it didn't trigger the hormone to release the milk flow. So for seven days, I was struggling with, why is my milk not here? Why is it not here? And that was already compounded with everything else, the physical, not being able to walk up the stairs in my house, having people get things for me, minding how I had to breastfeed and hold my baby. It, it, was, it was wild. But I think the main and the biggest obstacle that happened was the emotional trauma. It's traumatic. Labor can be traumatic either way you put it, any way you put it. Labor can be traumatic. And I wasn't given the support that I needed in the beginning to deal with that trauma. Um, I felt like a failure. I felt like my body failed me. I felt like, what didn't I do right? What could I have done better? Did they really need to, to operate? Could I have pushed a little bit more? Should I have fought a little bit harder? And I find it so interesting that we as people always ask, why me? when we're in a moment of despair or disappointment or comparison. But we never ask, why me, when something wonderful is happening? And so I look back now on my journey of having a C-section. Um, I was so focused on what went wrong, I wasn't able to see what went right. And what went right is, three years later, here I am with my son, healthy, and we're able to enjoy each other for the rest of our lives. And had I continued to push or resist or been at home and develop these complications, I may not have been here to see my son. I can't go back and change it. Um, I don't wanna spend any more time questioning why it didn't happen the way I anticipated it to go. I, in the future, if I choose to have another child, my preference would still be to try to have V back. However, if that's not in the cards for me, at least this time I'm better equipped. I just feel like there needs to be more conversation in preparation of the possibility of C-sections, especially since the statistics are so high. And let's not even begin with the statistics against women of color who die during labor in this country. That's a whole other episode and I'll have to bring in an expert to really comment on that. But in looking back now and in knowing what I know, I'm just here to lend a voice of support for any mama out there who has had an unexpected cesarean section operation. Your body did not fail you. You did not do anything wrong. And if you are here to witness this video today, every decision was made that day for you was the right one, because here we are. So when I look back now, I'm thankful. I have a grateful heart. Um, I no longer want to spend any more time focusing on what could have, should have been. I think that we make that mistake too often in anything that we feel disappointed with in life. And I want to honor this scar. And every time I look at it, it is my battle scar. It is the thing that reminds me of this beautiful miracle that came into my life, my son Cameron. And it is the site of a miracle. And should that have to be the site of a miracle again one day, I will honor it then too. So uh, before May comes around, let's keep the conversation going. Happy C-Section Awareness Month to all my warrior C-Section mamas out there. You are amazing. You are worthy. You are awesome. You are here. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what it is that you guys would like to see me talk about. Um, until the next video, I will end it off the way I always say. Love yourself. Live in your truth. And surrender to your dreams.
I'll see you the next time, guys. Peace.